What's up guys, my name is Micah and this is going to be the ninth video in the tutorial series for 2D iPhone game programming. We're going to start the world generator class in this video, so we are going to um, hopefully get the ground generating along the lines so the hero can keep moving forward rather than falling off the side of the block here. So to get started, we're going to make a new class, so command N going to be Objective-Z class. I'm going to call this ML World Generator. You can um, use your own initials if you want. It's going to be a subclass of SK Node. The reason we're not using SK Sprite Node is because the generator doesn't actually have a width or a height. It's just a node we're going to add to the scene that's going to, um, that's going to create obstacles and ground nodes within the world. Um, it's not actually going to create the nodes within the ML World Generator class. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the factory method. Um, we're going to call it generator with world SK node world. And so the reason I'm not just doing generator, I'm adding this with world piece is because I want to have a reference to the world node within this ML world generator class, because that's going to be the node that we're actually adding on the ground and the obstacle nodes to. So now that we just have this basic template for that, we're going to add a couple variables because we're going to be setting those within our factory method, a couple of properties. So we're going to add interface ML world generator and end. And our properties are going to be, it's going to be three properties. We're going to have the current ground, oh, it's going to be double. It's going to be the current ground X property the current obstacle x property along with the world sk node world property so what the current ground x and the current obstacle x properties are going to be they're just going to keep track of where the last obstacle was that you um, actually drew into the scene so for the ground for example we're going to draw the ground over and over again in um, chunks that are the width of the iPhone screen. So we wanna know exactly where that last one was so we can position the next one exactly um, one width that block size over. So you'll understand this um, in the examples when we actually get to it if you don't understand it now. So in the generate with world method, we're going to create our world generator. So we're just gonna call that generator equals ML world generator node. And remember that the ML world generator inherits from the SK node class, so we should be able to do that. We should be able to call that method and be good to go. Um, now we're going to set the current ground X and current obstacle X properties. So the generator dot current ground X property is just going to be zero because um, if you remember in our in our um, Mycene class, the anchor point is set to the middle of the screen. So our current ground X at zero, we want to have that initial ground drawn at zero. And um, for our generator.current obstacle X, we're just gonna call this, let's say, um, we're, so we're, we're gonna make that 400. Um, we can mess around with that later. This is just going to be the position of the first obstacle that we run into within the world. And then we're also gonna set the world property of the generator to world. So um, if this is confusing for you guys because there's two uh, two instances of the word world, um, we're actually accessing the world property when we do the dot world right here. And we're accessing the world that we pass in when we just type out the word world. Um, then we're going to return that generator and now we have a generator, um, a returnable generator. So cool. Actually, one more, we need to actually add this generate with world method in the header file to be able to access it um, outside this class. So now we're gonna create a couple methods. Um, we're gonna do the populate method and we're gonna do the generate method. And all the populate method is gonna do is gonna call the generate method three times. Um, we have the generate, so we're going to do a for loop, so we're going to do for int i equals 0, i is less than 3, i plus plus, 
and we're just going to call self generate. So the populate method is just going to get um, our initial grounds kind of drawn in there so the scene actually has a ground uh, when it loads up. Um, so we'll have that called the populate method when we actually uh, when we actually initialize the generator. So we'll do generator populate. Now in the generate method, this is where we're going to draw our ground and our obstacle within our world. So let's do um, SK sprite node. Actually, no, we're gonna just copy this over. We just wanna copy over what we had done, done before. So we're going to go into the my scene implementation file. We're gonna grab all this junk. So all, actually we're just going to cut Cut that out because the ground is always going to be drawn through the ML world generator class. So we're going to have the ground here, and um, you want to change this right here, the um, from adding it just the keyword world to self dot world because we want to access that reference that we passed in through the uh, through the creation class there. Now I'm not exactly sure why none of this text is coloring up here, but um, uh, I think we, the reason that the ground isn't there is because we cut it out of the uh, original method. So I think that should um, that should fix itself in just a sec. So now that we have the generate method, um, we want to have that called. It's just, it's just going to draw three grounds in the same position. We're going to fix that, but first we want to get our scene back and running again. So we're going to go into the my scene implementation file. We're going to add another global property that is going to be the ML world generator class. First, we need to actually import that into our scene. ML world generator. We're going to call that generator, and then we're going to do generator equals ml world generator generator with world world and we're going to add the generator to our scene okay i actually just cut that clip because we actually need to change a couple things uh, before we move on in the my scene class we need to go back into the ml world generator implementation file we need to um, before this said generator populates and the initialization method, we actually have to take this out. So just delete this. And um, we need to do instead of self.frame.size.width for the width of the ground, we need to do self.scene because um, grabbing self is just going to grab our ML world generator node, which doesn't actually have a width. So it's just putting zero in there. So if we just have this as self.frame.size.width, um, the ground is not going to have a width of zero and it's not even going to show up. We also have to change the y coordinate of the ground so that it positions itself in our scene. We have to do self.scene.frames.size.height. Same deal. It's just going to screw up with our y coordinate just because this whole thing would be zero if we didn't actually change that. So um, make sure in your ML world generator header file that you put in the populate and generate methods. And now we can go back to the my scene method. So after we initialize this generator, we want to populate the world um, as we have now. So if we run this, we are going to get, if this runs here, <laughs> we'll get the ground generating. And so now we basically have what we had before. Um, right now, three grounds have been drawn over one another. In the next tutorial, we're gonna actually make it so um, the ground keeps generating side by side so we'll have a continuous world that you can run on. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.